In early days, disposal of waste and refuse was easy. We simply threw the stuff out in front of the cave. And when the pile got too big, we just moved our family and our belongings to a new cave. Unfortunately, we eventually ran out of caves, and mankind was brought face to face with the expensive problem of getting rid of refuse. As the population grew, the problem got bigger and more and more expensive. Until today, the tab for refuse disposal runs into billions of dollars annually. Where does the money go? First, for maintenance and operation of disposal areas, like this sanitary landfill, or municipally owned incinerators, where combustible waste is burned. Second, the lion's share of the money goes for the manpower required to collect and load refuse into trucks. And third, there's the cost of transporting the waste to the disposal area, such as payroll, gasoline, oil, maintenance, and other expenses. Yes, for business, industry, and municipal governments, waste disposal is a billion dollar headache every year. But in addition to the cost, there's another big problem called temporary waste storage. Unless you have a bottomless pit in your backyard, you have to provide temporary storage for your refuse. First, a place. Then, something to put the refuse in. Some prefer cans, some prefer boxes, while others find it much more convenient just to throw it on the ground. Dogs and cats seem to prefer the cans. Rats like the cans too, but boxes are their best friends. While flies don't really care how you store it as long as it's open. This is not too bad a system as long as you don't <coughs> get too close to it. There are three big areas for improvement in refuse handling. First, storing it. Second, collecting it. And third, transporting it to the disposal area. The storage problem is easy to beat with a clean, big capacity dumpster dump master container. Refuse is dumped through the end doors or the lids. Here it is fully enclosed. Flies can't get in. Ditto for the rats. Wind can't scatter it. Fire is out of the question. And man's best friend is dealt a cruel blow. The second improvement area is in collection. Collecting refuse from the Dempster Dump Master container is quite different from conventional refuse collection in that one man and one Dempster Dump Master handle the entire job. Let's see how it's done. The Dump Master approaches this six yard container, engages the side channels with its lifting arms and up it goes to be automatically rotated over the hopper where it empties its load before returning the container to its original position. The equivalent of 40 trash cans emptied in less than 30 seconds. This leaves transporting the waste as our third area of improvement. Before the large population growth of the last decade and a half, Disposal areas were only a short hauling distance from any part of the city. But as our cities grew and expanded, the halls got longer and longer. Small capacity trucks, once economical, were enlarged. And enlarged until they became impractical. This eventually led to the development of the Packer-type truck body, 
Most refuse, being light and bulky, can be compressed or packed to reduce its volume. This allows the truck to carry bigger payloads, making the long hauls to the disposal area practical. Let's take a look at the Dempster Dumpmaster packing mechanism. The packer plate is moving back with a compression force of 60,000 pounds, supplied by a powerful five-stage hydraulic cylinder on the other side of the plate. This powerful compression enables the Dempster Dumpmaster to haul from 70 to 100 cubic yards of loose material on every trip to the disposal area. Here's a view of a typical load being dumped at a disposal area. The driver has unlatched the rear door and is clearing the body with the packer plate. Note how tightly the material is compressed. Thus, we see the three big advantages of the Dempster Dumpmaster system. Sanitary enclosed temporary storage. Fast economical collection. And big payloads for economical long hauls. Now let's take a closer look at the Dempster Dumpmaster. First the clearance arms which come in three sizes. Here's type CA15 which has a gross weight lifting capacity of 1500 pounds and handles one, two and three cubic yard containers. Then there's the CA30 which lifts 3000 pounds gross handling containers one through six yard capacity. For situations where extra heavy material must be handled there's the CA60 which lifts 6000 pounds and handles all containers, one through six yards. There are also three sizes of packer bodies. The 18DB holds 18 cubic yards of compacted material, or the equivalent of 54 to 72 yards of loose refuse. The 24DB packs from 70 to 100 yards into its 24 cubic yard body. And the 30DB, which has a loose refuse capacity of 80 to 120 yards in its 30 yard body. For special situations, depending on the truck chassis, any type clearance arm may be used with any size packer body. However, in most cases, the CA-15 is used with the 18DB packer, the CA-30 with the 24DB, and the CA-60 is used with the 30DB packer body. Here's a type CA-30 with a 24 cubic yard body. Note that the clearance arms, rather than being straight, bridge the cab, an important safety feature. No chance of striking the operator's head or arm. And cab doors may be opened at any arm position, permitting the driver to dismount if necessary, to operate outside controls and move containers to the lifting clearance arms. This speeds operations at locations where inside containers are used. For high dock pickups, outside controls with extra long handles are available. Inside controls are simple and easy to operate. They are used for dock or ground pickup where the container does not have to be moved. For operation in exceptionally windy areas, a manual hopper cover is available. And a completely automatic cover that opens and closes with each dumping cycle can be installed. Another optional feature is a pressure tank for water or deodorant. This permits easy cleaning of containers used for garbage storage. Fantans transfer pressure from the lifting arms to the truck frame, preventing damage from shock. Seven types of all steel containers are available for use with the dump master. Six yard, five yard, four, three, two, and one yard capacities. A seventh container makes it possible to use the dump master on hand-loaded routes when it is not serving storage containers. Moving along, it is carried in front of the dump master where the operator can see the loading crew at all times. Note the low loading height. When the container is full and ready to be dumped into the compactor body, this swinging baffle plate keeps rubbish from scattering.
Other special types of containers with couplers and casters are towed in trains to inside accumulation points in large industrial plants. Containers track perfectly down aisles and around turns. Here's another type of industrial application at the Caterpillar Tractor Company, Morton, Illinois. Here, detachable containers and the dump master dispose of hundreds of yards of refuse daily. In addition to serving big industrial plants, the dump master is performing its job in many cities. An installation in Atlanta, Georgia is operated by the McWhirter Materials Handling Company. At hundreds of locations all over Atlanta, McWhirter is providing containerized refuse service for a wide variety of customers. In the Atlanta airport area, containers are spotted at 18 outdoor and indoor accumulation points. Here the highly mobile Dempster Dump Master makes its rounds from container to container and picks up 85 yards of refuse, the equivalent of 526 standard trash cans in one hour and five minutes. Like this pickup just inside the Southern Airways hangar. Or this one, where the driver pushes the container on the arms and uses the outside controls to empty it. Elsewhere in the city of Atlanta, the dump master serves small customers and large ones, like Carling's Brewery. At Carling's, it goes inside to a dock. Dismounting, the driver pushes the container onto the lifting arm raises it clear of the dock with his outside controls. He backs outside where the load is dumped and the container is then returned to its dock position. At National Container Corporation, a six cubic yard container placed below docks is easy for the Dempster Dump Master to reach. For service stations, garages, and smaller commercial firms, the two cubic yard container serves admirably. This Texaco station keeps its premises clean, eliminates fire hazards by using enclosed storage. Here's a motel application using a two cubic yard container on casters. This is a Kroger grocery warehouse, served by one six yard container. And a food processor, Gordon's Atlanta plant, is also served by one container. Yes, all over Atlanta, and all over America, the Dempster Dump Master is providing efficient, low cost refuse removal service for municipalities, industrial plants, commercial firms, and housing areas.